Hey everybody, welcome to another Bill Sky the Assembly Guy video. Today what we're going to do is we're going to create a Visual Studio 32-bit and a 64-bit assembly language application. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this from within a Windows virtual machine. And you shouldn't see any difference here, but it's going to be really cool. So let's get started. So I'm going to jump into my start button. I'm going to do a search for Visual Studio. One thing that I like to do when I'm doing a lot of development on the same tool is I actually like to put the icon on the desktop. So once I find my Visual Studio 2022, I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to say open file location. And I'm just going to hold down my right mouse button and drag it to the desktop and say copy. And now I don't have to click the start button all the time. You could also put it on the taskbar if you'd like, but I like putting my development tools on the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that, start Visual Studio. And I'm going to create a new project. Now, in the, one of the previous videos, we did a test CPP project. But in this video, we're going to do our first assembly language project. So I'm going to click on create a new project. And it's kind of, it's, it's almost identical to the C++ project we did because we're going to do a C++, it sounds weird, but we're going to do a C++ console app. Now, Visual Studio doesn't have a template for assembler. And actually, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own assembler template uh, so you can use it again. Because setting up an assembler language program is not quick and dirty and a couple of just clicks. So we're going to go ahead, click C++ Windows Console. I'm going to click on the console app. Uh, don't click on the uh, empty project because that means you have to set up even more things manually. But we're going gonna, to gonna go ahead and click on the console app, click Next. And this one, I'm going to name it. So I'm going to call it ASM x86. x86 stands for 32-bit. I'm just going to call it Project 1. Notice I didn't put any spaces. You can, but you might have trouble with that in the future. So I like to always leave blanks out of my project and file names. And I'm going to click Create. Now, there's a number of things that we have to do. Uh, we have to get rid of that CPP file, but we also have to tell the project that we want you to be enabled for a summer language. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go up here and we want to right click on our project. And we're going to go down to build dependencies and build customizations. Now, what we're doing is we're customizing the build environment. And the thing that we want to do is we want to turn on MASM. I don't know why I turned on mesh. Let's go ahead and turn off all of those. And we just want to turn on MASM. And then we go ahead and click OK. Now we have this pesky C++ file in our source files. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to right click and say remove and say delete because we don't want it there anymore. And I don't like this what's new tab, so I'm going to get rid of that. And now under source files, I'm going to right click, select add, new item. And I'm going to give this one a very simple uh, file name, just main.asm. Now, what's really important is that you end it with .asm. Some people end their uh, assembly language source files with .s. I like using .asm. It's just more descriptive to me. And then I'm going to click OK. OK, so uh, here we go. We're going to create our very first uh, Visual Studio Assembly Language program. So we'll talk more about what each one of these means uh, after this video. So let's go ahead and start putting it in. We want to say .386, which means it's a 32-bit application. Uh, put in some other um, required statements for a 32-bit application. This is your first uh, view of, a of an assembly language program. So if you're kind of confused, that's OK. We'll get there. So let's talk about a little bit of these. Now, this is it. This is our very first application. It does nothing, but let's talk about these 
of what we entered in. Now, 386 simply means that we're going to, this is a 32-bit application, not a 64-bit application. We want to use what they call the flat memory model, and we also want to use standard C calling conventions. So that's why we put standard uh, C-A-L-L. Also, we're allocating some memory for our stack. Now, we'll talk more about the stack, but the stack is the memory of just about any application and the way that the CPU and the operating system, the data structure the CPU and operating system use to manage your application. Uh, we also have a function prototype, in this case called exit process. Uh, proto means that this is a prototype and it's going to take one argument, which is a double word. We'll talk all about that in this course as well, what a D word is. Then we have the data section, dot data. That's where you define all of your data, all of your variables, all of your uh, constants. You don't have to put your constants in the data, but that's where I like to put them. Dot code is our code, our actual source code. Uh, main.proc is our main procedure. Procedure is the same as function, so main proc. A no op means don't do anything. Just means, you know, take up some CPU time. And I like to put a, a no op at the first line of code and uh, the second to the last line of code so I can use the debugger uh, very effectively that way. Invoke is calling a function, in this case, exit process, and we're sending it a zero return code which you can see up here on line four is what it's expecting. It's expecting a single argument. Uh, this is the end of our procedure and this is the end of our main program. Okay, so with all of that done, I'm gonna click the save all button. I'm gonna go up to build and I'm gonna select build solution. Now, I'm doing this on purpose to show you what happens if you don't tell Visual Studio what you wanna do. It's gonna give you a bunch of strange errors here and that's because this is a 32-bit application but we have 64 bits selected so up here to the right of debug i'm going to drop that down select x86 i'm going to say build build solution again and this time the build should work out great so there you go you wrote your very first uh, assembler language project now where do i find this project well, i showed you this uh, in the previous video on installing visual studio but I'm gonna close Visual Studio here and I'm gonna to go to my home folder, source, repository, and there's the test C++ project that we did in the installation video. Here's our first assembly language project. Also notice that I put ASM to let me know that that's an assembly language project. I put x86 to let me know that it's 32-bit and then the project name. I always like to right click on these and I always like to compress them to a zip file. So once I have a project uh, set up and, and, and ready to go, I always like to create a, a, a zip file and then I'll drag that zip file like over to a USB thumb drive or some backup media. So uh, if I lose it, it's, it's, it, it's, I can get it back. It's backed up basically. All right, so that's setting up our first 32-bit assembly language application in Visual Studio. See you at the next video, which is how do we set up a 64-bit application in Visual Studio. See you then.